Hi, you guys. I'm back at my old McDonald's. Okay, I got up and I was watching a video from Fast to Frugal Home Cooked Food by Make It Enough. Make It Enough is a new channel and it's really, really good. And in this channel, she was talking about how she's cooking at home. And it's really good video. You guys should check it out. I tweeted it. You can go to my Twitter, Rotostone Twitter. I posted a lot of pictures on my Instagram as well. And uh, check out from fast food to frugal home cooked food. So I, I'm going to do a video on a few tips to avoid eating out. A lot of times people eat out because they're tired, they, there's nothing in the house to cook, they don't want to eat anything in the house they have to cook. So I, I worked all my life and, and I cooked at home every single night. And sometimes I was exhausted, but I would still cook. So Jan from New York City Saves Money had a great tip and she said, eat on paper plates. I thought, yeah, that's a good idea. I bought a bunch of paper plates. But what I have always done is when I start cooking dinner, I fill the sink, a big sink full of soapy water. And as I'm cooking, I dump everything that I've used in there. And then and then at the end of the meal, I, I mean everything, the, the the pots and pans, the plates from eating, the cooking utensils goes in there, and then all I would have to do is just rinse it off and load the dishes. Sometimes if I'm too tired, I just rinse the dishes and throw them in the other side of the sink and wash them later. But I have three meals that are really good to make, you know, to avoid that I'm too tired to cook. This is the one I, I uh, made a lot baked chicken and at the same time I would bake potatoes and what I did is I just melted a little margarine in a, a baking pan. I dusted the chicken with a little flour, salt, pepper and I baked at 350. The potatoes, most of the time I cut them in half and I just put a little margarine and salt and pepper on the top and I baked them in the oven 350 and I turned the chicken halfway. So it wasn't too messy and it wasn't too much work and then you know, I would do a load of laundry or, you know, get ready for work. Baked chicken and baked potatoes. Okay, macaroni and cheese and fish fillets or chicken tenders. I made the chicken tenders the same way as the baked chicken. I just dusted them with flour. I baked them in a baking sheet with a little melted margarine and flipped them halfway. And I usually had some barbecue sauce. And then if you make your macaroni and cheese um, from from scratch it's so much better uh, you just make white gravy two tablespoons flour well two tablespoons margarine and then sprinkle two tablespoons flour and brown it a tiny bit to take the raw taste off of the flour and add uh, one half evaporated milk one half water usually about a can one can of water one can of evaporated milk and make your white gravy and then just add um, just add your um, cheese and then add cooked macaroni. And um, the big uh, fish fillets are pretty good. I usually would eat those with um, with um, some tartar sauce. And on both of those, you know, you can have some frozen corn or some frozen peas or canned or fresh. And then one more really easy meal, and it is easy to keep everything on hand is spaghetti and garlic bread and what i would do is i would fry my uh, meat in in the saucepan and then if there was grease i would just take it out with some paper towels you know tip my pan with the meat on one side and take the grease out and pour the spaghetti sauce and the cooked noodles in in the same pan and it really wasn't much of a mess so spaghetti and garlic bread, that's a good one. And, and all of these can generate food for the next day, which would be good too, which would save money. But I would usually eat a cheese, beet and cheese sandwich. Okay, the reason I'm so tired is the feng shui continues. Hopefully I'm gonna, okay, the feng shui is one of those projects that's gonna take months. <laughs> 
the first step is you have to spotlessly clean your house and you have to get rid of everything broken, damaged, or chipped. That's my whole entire apartment. But once you get it done, it's really nice. I've actually done it before. So um, the feng shui continues. Um, and I will be selling all the junk at the, the thrift store at the swap meet which is another ordeal the thrift store shopping continues what i do is i scour around in the thrift stores i find stuff and i sell it on ebay or i sell it at the uh, thrift store another thing if you guys are thinking about the uh, ebay business i would consider thrift store uh, i mean plus size because when i'm trying to do the plus size ebay i can't find any uh, generally what I do is I buy brand new stuff, but the other day the stuff I found I got for a dollar. So as long as I sell it for two dollars at the thrift store, uh, at the swap meet, that is fine. Because you need a massive amount of, these days, you need a massive amount of good stuff, really low price to make any money uh, at um, a swap meet. Uh, one of the men at the the thrift store told me he's back at the thrift store because his um, swap meat business uh, failed. I think the reason the swap meat business could fail is your inventory could dry up. Uh, what a lot of people who have habitually sold at the swap meat is they get in very, very early. You, you pay extra to actually get in early and they shop before they start selling, you know, to get all the good stuff. And then they shop, they, they shop afterwards. They have someone watch the booth and then they're shopping because when people get tired, they drop the price. So they're always getting new inventory. But what I do is I do it all by myself because I keep all the money for myself. Okay, the stockpiling of food continues. Oh, and somebody on the comments have really been good. You guys read the comments. Oh, one of the ladies said she um, she buys her staples at um, Aldi's. I go, yeah, that's a good idea. We just got an Aldi's out here. So I'm going to get my shortening at Aldi's. Uh, the eBay continues. Um, if you want to make some extra money, consider eBay. When you first start, you know, before they trust you to get the people's money and send them the stuff, uh, the way I do it is I do the auction and that way I'm creating a, a paycheck like by the week. It can be by the day if my stuff sells. And so I get, at, at first you get 30 free. I don't want to pay $50. I don't want to pay for a store. Well, I used to prevail in hairdressing because I wouldn't spend very little money to make money. Most of the time I would cut hair. I do barbering or haircuts. It doesn't cost you anything to do it and they come back, you know, and get haircuts. But, so on the eBay, you start out, you get 30 free, so you get one free item, and then when they trust you, they give you 50. And then, a lot of times, if you will advertise, if you have social media, like I have Twitter, if you will advertise your item on Twitter, then you get your item free. So it's coming along nicely and it's not costing me anything. You have to pay 10, I think it's 10% if you sell and now 5% to um, PayPal. A lot of people ran out of eBay, but I noticed they ran out. But all you do is you just figure that 15% and the shipping into the item. So that is easy to do if you get the item uh, cheap enough. So the other day, you know, when I found, I think I found 15 um, plus size items. So, uh, and then I got free uh, free clothes in the, in the laundry room. So my, and I'm piling it all up in garbage bags so that it doesn't drive me. First of all, I don't want to smell old clothes in my house. I have everything in a spare bedroom. I'm preparing for Christmas. That in itself is a lot of work if you want a nice Christmas. So I'm preparing for Christmas and my balcony garden continues. Okay, my garden is dying. <laughs> I have though, I'm very proud about this. I have like eight tomatoes, but now my 
scrappy garden has created a mess. And so I'm trying to create like a garden type, you know, like, uh, you know, like the gardens in times gone past, you know, the rooftop gardens. I'm trying to create one and it's not coming along. It's, it's an awful garden. <laughs> And my son goes, Mom, you got to get a farmer's almanac and you got to find when you plant the stuff and, and harvest the stuff. And I said, farmer's almanac, nothing. This is Southern California. I'm growing my garden year round. And so I'm thinking about the farmer's <laughs> almanac thing. So, okay, you guys, I might try some, uh, but where I live, where I'm living here, Insects, you know, those were some wicked dust mites. In one night, they chewed down my entire basil plant that I had spent weeks to months growing. They were brutal. But then in a way I felt good because, you know, I kind of contributed to the ecosystem. So, okay, you guys, God bless you all.